during this time of our worship, amen, when we honor the Lord and worship the Lord in our giving, in the giving of our tithes and offerings, amen. For those who are online, amen, you can give to First Mount Zion via giving by app on your phone, amen. Just find our logo, amen, First Mount Zion Street Baptist Church. Once you found that, you found us, amen. You can give by way of your Givelify account online, amen. You can also go to our website at firstmountzion.com, amen. Go there and hit the donate button on the home
uh, at least part of them. That's what he said. I didn't show you everything, Sean. I'm like, yeah, I said, I know, I know. But I said, there is, I've learned that you didn't teach me either. So, uh, <laughs> the time. But, uh, the, but me and my dad used to pull fish out all the time. And then uh, we would have a fish fry that day, literally. Um, uh, either at his house, amen, or at the aunt's house, and clean all the fish and so forth, amen. Uh, fishing is peaceful for me. It, it's being with nature. It's one of the places I love to be because I feel like I'm with God. Amen. Amen. And I hope you have that place and space for yourself as well. That could be anywhere. It might not be in a pond. And you won't have to deal with mosquitoes and all the other stuff that comes with it. And you might have another thing. You may knit. You may do something else. Find that place where you can have a better intimate relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And that's just my advice for you today, because when you do that and you connect that way, what you will find, amen, is that God, you will hear God speak. You will hear God speak to you, amen, on various things in the world in your life, giving answers to certain things and so forth. But sometimes, even like Jesus, you got to steal away from the folks. You got to steal away from your children. You got to steal away from your job. You got to steal away and go somewhere where you can be by yourself. But remember that you're not by yourself because you're getting away so you can get closer to God. Yes, amen? Amen. 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 Again, there is a word from the Lord on today. I pray that it blesses your soul. Out of Romans chapter 10, <clears throat> and I ask that you stand, if you, those who can stand, even though some cannot, but please stand for the reading of God's word in Romans 10. I'm not going to read all 17 verses because I know that's been read and you're hearing, but I want to focus in. Oh my goodness. I want to focus in on that last part, verses 14 through 17, because that's really where we're going to really hang our hat on today. Again, Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Chapter 10, verses 14 through 17. And it reads from the New International Version of God's Word. This is what it says. It says, How then? Can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. But not all the Israelites accepted the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? Verse 17. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message. And the message is heard through the word about Christ. But let me read it from the King James because I like that better. Consequently, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God on this morning. Amen. We want to thank God on today. Amen. For uh, I, know, I know Brother Don, Deacon Dr. Bell is here in worship. Amen. He's outside. Amen. Probably hearing me right now. But uh, he stays out by my side. Amen. Just glad that he's here. Amen. Especially with a lot of sick and, uh, uh, sickness. He, he being sick and shut in, but he's here in worship on the day. We thank God for that. Amen. I told him I was going to pick on him when I got back in here. Amen. From the office. Amen. But glad to see him on this morning. And glad that he is here in worship. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for this word that will go in faith. Bless it now and keep us. And allow it, Lord, to do what the word the word does, for truly it is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. It constructs, it destructs, it reproves, it corrects. Lord, it clears the path so we can see, O oh Lord, the way we need to go. Thank you, Lord, for your word as it goes forward on today. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 For the time that is ours on this morning, Amen. I want you to look at your neighbor. Amen. Last uh, sight and sound. Just give me a little bit more volume on this mic. Just a little bit. Amen. And on today, first of all, I want you to look at your neighbor.
And I want you to help me introduce the sermon title on today. Very simple. Amen. Just tell your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. I need. Amen. Amen. Turn to your other neighbor. Amen. And just tell the neighbor. Oh, neighbor. I need a word. Amen. 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 Thank you for helping me introduce the title of this message on this morning. I need a word. I need a word. I need a word. Church, I don't know what your normal morning factions of what you do to get up on a Sunday morning. To get up and get here to church on a Sunday. But please let me use my isogetical imagination. And try to figure out, at least in a general sense, what you do do in order to prepare to come to church each Sunday. I imagine that you set the alarm clock the night before. That you've got your clothes already laid out, or at least you have a plan in mind once you get up of what you're going to do to lay your clothes out. I used to be the former, but I'm the latter now of that. And so uh, I'm normally going through the process of looking at sermon notes. That's just me. But I'm sure that you are going through a process yourself. Intimately, you're going through and finding all of your makeup stuff. Men, you're making sure that you have deodorant and all the other good stuff set out. You make sure that you're chronically brushing your teeth and doing all those things in order to make sure that you're taking care of good mannerisms, if you will, before you get here and come to church. I, I pray that you are probably watching something, either online on your phone or on the television set, that is giving you some connotation of God's spirit as you begin the process of approaching this place on a Sunday morning. You go through the process, and I'm talking to folks that are in worship. I'm going to deal with online in a minute. Amen. But uh, you come here, and you make it a point to get everything set, that you've eaten your niece's sausage, that uh, the eggs that you, that you paid almost $10 for at the grocery store, that you cooked and scrambled, that you made sure you didn't do that. There was enough milk, 2% whole milk, that you got your honey oats or uh, whatever you eat, Cheerios or Cinnamon Toast Crunch, you kept it crunch and you got all that together put all that in front of you make sure that you ate it, make sure that you had something to eat maybe you just put your clothes on, grab the stuff and you headed to QT like I did and got a little bit of something and just made it a point to eat something before you got to God's house and before long you came here you ended up at the church building and I don't know what struggle it took for you to get here, but you're here. And as I said last week, we talked about sacrifice a little bit, and we know there's a level of struggle that comes with serving God, and because you want to serve God, because you want to do better for God, I think you came here partly not just to hear Tommy Campbell, not just to hear the choir by itself, not to be just greeted at the door by the ushers, but you came to get a word. You came here for a word from the Lord. Those online, yes, I ain't forgot about you, but deal with you too. The reality is, is that yes, yeah, yes, you were like, I'm not going in person, but I got the technology set up. I'm going to make sure that at 11 o'clock, that we'll go and we'll go online on Facebook and that that everything is cut off because guess what? Nobody get, gets to see me when I'm online. Yeah. So I can just come in my pajamas, yeah. grab my bowl of oatmeal or syrup, yeah. some eggs that I cooked or what have you, and I can actually float around the house uh -huh. and watch service. 
Well, that's good for you too because at the end of the day, you wouldn't have gotten up. You wouldn't have put your house slippers on. You wouldn't have gotten to the process of trying to figure out exactly what you were going to do. But you knew in your mind that at 11 o'clock, I need to be on virtual worship at first Mount Zion. And when you realize that, that's why you tuned in and that's why you're here. Because you need a word. In church, uh, I come to this question this morning of why did you come here virtually or in person this morning to receive the word? Well, church, some came because you need God to get your spirit in a repositioned state from the tortures of your job from last week and to quick trip fill you up for the hell you anticipate from contrary spirits when the winds blow this coming other week. Oh, y'all not with me yet? Church song came because demonic spirits of their or your past are trying to reinfest your spiritual dwelling like uninvited rats and roaches and pestilence, and you need to raid or decon them, exterminate them before they get started. Church, some came because you needed something. You needed a word spoken into you because you need joy where pain now resides. You need to be happy where you are feeling sad. You need answers to questions that have been bothering you all week and all month long. Some of you this morning came because bereavement is still a struggle. And you need the word of God to pour love where the void of a loved one continues to remain. You will never get over your loss. But you are trusting that a word from the Lord will help to lighten the load so you can get through today and your future tomorrows. Some of you came because chaos and confusion has invaded your camp and your space and you need a word to clear out the club to filter the noise so that you can hear the Spirit of God for guidance, for direction, and a pathway toward a brighter space. Some of you, church, are like tell of a man huh, on this morning. Truth, truth is, it's time to stop playing these games. We need a word for the people's pain. So Lord, speak right now and let it fall like rain. We're desperate. Lord, we're chasing after you. Some of you need a word because you have tried everything else to save you. The drugs didn't work. The sex didn't work. The opioids didn't work. Your hatefulness didn't work. Your denial didn't work. Your self-righteous behavior didn't work. And everything else you tried didn't work. And the salvation of your soul through the blood of Jesus Christ seems to be the only thing you have not tried just yet. Church, this is why we need a word. Because somebody here is dealing with something that I mentioned or something that I have not mentioned. And I know this seems very simplistic, but what I'm understanding more and more that each Sunday I have the opportunity as one being called by God to give to you the best that I can give based on what God has given me. And because of that, that becomes a connection that when we're in the midst of church, that now you bring all your cares, all your worries, all your stuff, all the stuff you don't want people to know about. You bring all that to God's house because you need a word. You need a 
word because there is something about God's word that does something transformational in your life. The word. The word, the good news, there's something about God's word that reconnects us back to God, back to his, his existence, and why he purposed us in the time that we're in. You need a word. I need a word. Because there is something about the word of God that helps to cut things that need to be cut. There's something about the word of God that is able to shift some things that need to be moved. There is something about the word of God that allows some fixtures to be put in place and for some things to just be set down. The word of God repositions, recalibrates, removes, puts back together, allows for us to see the glory of God. But it's something about God's word that moves things, that moves mountains, that moves obstacles, it brings things in, flushes old things out. There's something about God's word. And when we truly and intrinsically get God's word, we find that we're better now than we were on yesterday. The word. Church, the, the word. The word of God is what moves us to next pinnacles. And church, I know the sounds too familiar, too similar, too, too, too easy in the midst of a Sunday morning worship. But I need somebody to understand in their spirit that when you get the word of God truly inside of you, it has the power. Y'all care, church. It has the power to move some things in your life and allow you to live in peace and liberty with God's presence. It's the word. What did John say? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And the word was God. And when you come here on a Sunday morning, you're coming here to get God's word. Not what Pastor Hagwood said, but what God gave Pastor Hagwood to say. Church, if you really want to get happy, if you really want to experience God's presence in a greater way, Get the word inside of you. More importantly, get what God's word is meant for you to have. It is meant to open doors. It's also meant to close doors. The word of God is there to liberate you and not to have you incarcerated. The word of God is there so that you can move to the next plane and the next purpose that God has for you. The word. The word. The word. Church, you still haven't gotten it. The word. The word is what section three. The word. The word is what continues to move you in and out. The word. The word is why you ain't going crazy yet. The word is why you're holding, that you're holding so much of God in you now than you did yesterday. The word. The word is why you ain't gone off and left off yet. The word. The word is why your curse words and profanity are limited now. The word. The word is why, again, if, 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 if you were to look at anyone's life 10 or 20 years ago, before you got a little bit more of Christ in you, I guarantee you it was worse then than it is now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The word. And there is something about the preached word of God that begins the process of making shifts and moves into different directions that God would have us to go in. And church, I want to deal with this question. As the Spirit of God will allow on this morning, yeah. <clears throat> why is the preached word of God, why is it needed? Why is the preached 
word of God needed. Church, I got a couple of points this morning. And we're trying to take this thing home as quickly as possible. Again, church, why is the preached word of God needed? Church, my first point to this question <clears throat> of why the preached word of God is needed is because it dissolves the gimmicky, the gimmicky resolution. Because it dissolves the gimmicky resolutions. Let me help you, church. In this passage of scripture in Romans, one of the things that Paul begins to bring out, and he does it so very beautifully, is around verse, uh, the verses of scripture around verse 5 through 8. What he does is, he begins to speak and talk about what he says Moses writes this about righteousness, the righteousness that is by the law. The person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the deep? That is to bring Christ down up from the dead. But what does it say? But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. Watch this church. All that going, ascending into heaven to bring Christ down, going to the depths to bring Christ up, all Paul is trying to say is that you don't need a gimmick in order to have a relationship with God. There are too many folks in the world who want to perform tricks, who want to trick and put trickery or place trickery with regards to how we need to have a relationship with God. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't take all that. It doesn't take us having to go up and down. Now, if you shout and run around the building, that's fine. But when your feet hit the ground, like my pastor back home says, you better live the straight and narrow way. Because at the end of the day, amen, you don't need a gimmick to be tied to God. Why is it so important for the preached word to be preached? Because God is not a hustle, and because we're not hustling from the perspective of God, we go through the process of don't create all of this fluff, all the superficial or superfluous stuff. All we need to do is keep it bound to Scripture in our relationship with God. You don't need somebody to say that you have to do this, 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 and that. It's too many rules. That's why when you come to Bible study at 7 p.m., this is why Jesus says, I came to fulfill the law and not to abolish it. The whole point is, you can't go down a room with 200 rules and then you're going to follow each and every one of them. That's why this thing can't be by works. It has to be by faith. And you can't believe if you ain't heard. Oh, you ain't hear me yet. You can't believe Christ unless the message of Christ has been heard. And that's why each Sunday, amen, in and out, we come here. This pastor comes here because I believe that the word is still transformational, that the word still has power, that the word, when you get it in your spirit, it does something to you. And it begins to work some things out in your life. I believe that's why you struggle to get here. You struggle to get here because you don't want the struggles you're dealing with to, to overcome you. So you're like, I need to hear a word from God that will help me transition my struggles into strength. Woo. To help me move past the place of my pain and to move to the auspices of joy. And when you begin to appreciate the word from that perspective, you will get more out of God, more out of Christ, and more out of your relationship with God 
because you're willing to connect the word of God to the power of God to God himself. And this is why, church, we are connected. Because we don't have to put all this stuff, all this fluff, all these heroic acts and try to have a circus show in church. Yeah. You missed it. Yeah. We don't have to go through all the hoops and hollows. The word of God moves us closer to his presence. Yeah. Now watch this church. And I love this analogy. Um, the word of God is like this. It's like the big salve that you buy at Walgreens <clears throat> or food line. Yeah. <clears throat> Me and my wife like to use Riley's salve. If you don't know what salve is, look it up online, you'll find it. One of the things you'll find is that stuff will get congestion out of you when you put it on your chest, it begins to be cool and then it kind of burns a little bit. But what it's doing is trying to break up mucus that's in your chest, in your neck, behind your neck, and break that stuff up so it can get out. Guess what the Word of God does? The Word of God gets inside of you to continue to purify and give you more meaning in Christ, to get all the eagerness out, to get all of the demonic stuff out, to get all the hell out, to get all that stuff out, because God wants to use you for a greater purpose, so you struggle to get here because you need God to rectify some stuff, but sometimes you don't realize that the stuff is much deeper inside of you that God needs to walk with, but you made your way. Guess what? When you put, put some of that on you, that, that salve on you, that word of God in you, you have a couple of things you want God to deal with, but because the power of God and the word of God is so, is so strong and, and, and and, 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 and so powerful when it does, it deals with other stuff that you didn't realize was wrong. And when you realize that's going on, you will find that God is working some other things out. Not only the things that you dreamed about, not only the things you prayed about, but also other things that God wants to work out. The Word of God does that. And it comes by way of the preached word. Church, told is very simplistic. The question again, why is the preached word of God needed? Church, the preached word of God is needed because God has a place, a sequence to answer the salvation uh, dispensation dilemma. God has placed a sequence to answer the salvation dispensation dilemma. Now, you're like, Pastor, there you go with your seminary stuff again. All right, let me help you. All dispensation is, is really talking about the work of the Holy Spirit. How does the Holy Spirit work? How does the Holy Spirit begin to work on the, the Adams and work on the members of the choir and to work on, 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 on Brother Jenkins? And how does the, how is that dispensated? How does that now, how, how does that move from the word that Pastor Hagman preached that God gave to him? And now the Spirit of God is moving on you with that word that was preached. Okay? Salvation dispensation is this. The first thing that Paul says in Romans 10 verse 1, he says this, Brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. Watch this church. God has a plan with that preach word. And I couldn't appreciate this a long time ago, but I appreciate it now. What happens, church, is that, first of all, in order for God to use the Holy Spirit to dispensate, to give, to give to you the aspect of his salvation and the continued effects of his salvation is he has to do it through a preacher. Oh, church is quiet. 
He does it through a preacher. But guess what? That preacher must be called. Yeah. Yeah. That's the requirement. Yeah. Yeah. It's not because they look good. It's not because they sound good. Not because they sing good. Because singing has nothing to do with it. It's about how God has purposed certain individuals in this world to dispensate salvation, his salvation, to you. Or to dispensate the reminder of his salvation to you who are already saved. Now watch this. How does he do it? First, a preacher must be called. Every preacher that was in the Bible, you can look it up, God called them in some way. The 12 disciples, Jesus what? He called them. Look at the, uh, look at the messengers like Moses, he was called. Look at all the prophets, minor and major, they were called. So a preacher must be called to this. Now, the reason why it's important for a preacher to be called to it it's because there's some certain things that the preacher is going to have to go through in order to be able to dispensate the aspect of God's salvation to everyone else. What does he, have to, he or she have to go through? Well, first of all, we see in the second in first and second Timothy, you must study to show yourself approved. Rock in the body, the word of truth. You must study and study long and study hard. Just like your pastor. I went through the process of under another pastor who told me, you need to go to school. You need to go to seminary. And you need to learn. Learn. And you need to be challenged. Because this is not something that is ordinary. This is something that is sacred. And because of that, you're dealing with the lives of individuals and people who are hurting, who have pain, that are dealing with this, that, and the other. And if you juggle that around, if you mess that must be called. And then church, he says, this is the latter part of the scripture, the preacher must proclaim the word. That's how we, we talk. We, we, we go through the process of preaching this word and, 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 and allowing the word to do the work that the word is supposed to do. So the preacher preaches the word. But now number three, the congregants have to hear the word. So now the word goes out, hits your ear, hits your spirit, begins the process of working on you. And as it's working on you, it's cleaning some things up. It's putting some things in a mind that you need to be repented of. Some things that you need to ask God for forgiveness for. Some things that uh, God is still working with you on. And if you have not received the salvation, it's working on you. You need to give your life to Christ. Before it's too late, that's the work. Holy Spirit's working. It's working because you heard the message, and now the message is starting to impact all of your being spiritually. The fourth thing is that the congregants must believe the message. And church, that's where the first level of salvation comes in. The level of accepting Christ for who he is. Believing that he died and he rose again for our sins. That begins the process of you accepting the salvation. Now, when we come in here and we know a salvation, it's a sanctification process because each week you are hearing the word. You are taking in the word and you're believing the word after you have believed in the salvation of Jesus Christ. That now begins to clean some things up. It begins to erase some things that somebody tried to write down on you. It begins the process of scrubbing some areas that need to be scrubbing. It begins the process of teaching you how to live in a God-like manner. It begins the process of taking you from glory to glory, to glory to glory, and to glory again. It begins the process of taking you to different stages in your walk with God so that you become better for the kingdom of God. Well, what about the preacher, Pastor? Well, every time, every week that I have to deal with God on God's word, God is tasking me. God is working on me. God is working through my spirit. And I pray that when the word is delivered from this rushroom each week, that it's doing something, that it's moving some things in your life, that together we're growing in God, becoming better for God, and willing to do God's work.
says in verse 1, brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. Watch this. Paul ain't talking about getting paid. Can y'all can hear me? Paul's not talking about getting paid. He's not talking about trying to please the church. He's not talking about, well, what am I going to get out of this? He said his heart's desire and prayer is that all the Israelites would be saved. That's unselfish. That is a heart that is willing to serve God, to serve God's people. And when you have a pastor and a preacher who does that unconditionally, tries to do it the best way they can all the time, at least most parts of the time, what you will find is that that person is trying to have a heart for God because that person has a heart for God's people because God has a heart himself. And church... That's why when you're under the tutelage, I do personally the best that I can in order to exhaust from this rostrum the unadulterated word of God so that we all, not just you, but all of us can become better for the kingdom of God. Mm. Church, watch this. Believers, those who believe, Call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. And the Lord saves them. That's why we're here every week. We're here to talk about salvation, full and free. But you, if you've already received that salvation, we're talking about still understanding that the salvation of Christ is still at work in you. Guess what? The devil is trying to turn you back 180, back to something that was demonic, something God saved you from. And we need to know that the preached word of God preaches the power of salvation to them that believe and moves us closer in relationship with Jesus Christ and our God. And that church is something that we connect with, either by the gospel message itself or by Christ actually speaking his message through the messenger. That's how it comes. Even through the gospel message, which we can read all day in scripture, or through what Christ has said about the gospel through the preacher. Church, I know the sermon was someone. I know the sermon uh, messed with you a little bit and said, Pastor, I know all this stuff. But I'm here to tell you, first of all time, this helps to connect some things for us. And as I begin to move to close of the sermon this morning, I want to tell you a little story that I pray will help you along the journey of life. Church, I read somewhere, somebody had car trouble. Somewhere on I-77, when they had car trouble, they were of a certain state. Amen. They happened to be from Texas. One of the things that happened is that they didn't have AAA. So the car didn't have AAA, they had to wait a little while in order for somebody to come and help them on the side of the road. They were having some mechanical problems. But watch this, church. Uh, on the back of the Texas driver's license, uh, they don't have it on the North Carolina. But on the Texas driver's license, they have certain numbers on the back of the license. So if you ever get in trouble and you don't have AAA, then you can call one of those numbers on the back of the license. And when you read that, you can dial and you will get roadside assistance immediately. Now watch this, 
church. You're probably wondering, why, Pastor, did you bring this up in the midst of the sermon this morning? Well, sadly, church, the tragedy of the Christian is they don't get enough of the word of God. And sometimes when they have the word right there in their living room, right when they have the word, right in their bedroom, right when they have the word, right there on the kitchen table, they refuse to open it to see what the word of God says. So the word of God can move in them and do something to transform their lives. They don't want to turn on Facebook. They don't want to turn on YouTube. But if you got all of these outlets in order to get the word of God, then in order to get a word, you need to turn that stuff on so that you can hear the word. Know the salvation there and be moved to righteousness, moved to joy, moved out of pain because God's word is what's going to help you until your dying day. First
there is a tie-in that me immediately allows us to touch folks. Because if the power of God saved you, if the power of God, the word of God is keeping you, I honestly believe and I hope that you believe that it'll do the same for someone else. That's why, church, we need a word. That's why the word of God is so powerful. That's why I love God calling me to do this because I love preaching, but I love transformation even more. And if the preached word of God leads to transformation, thank you, Jesus, for using me in order to make that happen. It's all about the transformation. Lives being changed. Why do we do the good that we do good, the good that we do here in person outside? Because we want lives to be changed. And we're not the ones that's changing it. Remember, it's God that's working in us and through us by the word that does it. And there's power in that. There's power. Let God use you, but also continue to be hungry. When your car's out of gas, all's out of gas, you just pray to God so you can get to the next quick trip to get a little bit of gas in there because you're trying to get here for church. Make your way, struggle your way, sacrifice your way to get here because you need the word. And guess what? Every Sunday, the pastor needs a word too. Amen. And that's why when God deals with me on sermons, amen, when God speak to me so I can speak to your people, because I need a word too. I need a word. I need a word. Do you need a word? Yeah. Church, do you need a word? Yeah. All of us need a word. Because we know the power that is tied to God's word. Amen. This morning, we're going to open up the doors of the church. Maybe someone who does not know Jesus Christ and be part of their sins. You may come. You may come with your Christian experience. Amen. And join our fellowship and our fellowship here at First Mount Zion. Whatever you need and whatever you desire for salvation. Romans 10 and 9, which is in the scripture today, says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus falls from the dead, you will be saved. Preach message. A message that's proclaimed, a message that is heard, and then a message that is believed. It will transform you. As the former sings, doors of church are open.
through, uh, through the calling post or through social media, but just want to make sure that you are aware of that. Please keep them in your prayer. And all of our members who are dealing with uh, are in this season of bereavement uh, and continue to go through that process, amen, which is a process uh, of going through. But let's stand behind them, let's stand in front of them, let's stand beside them as we continue to show the love of God and show that the word is true. And that truly the word, uh, the word did manifest and become flesh among us so that we could see what true living and true liberty look like through Jesus Christ. Amen. It's time to go home. We're time to find a meal. Amen. At this time, we're going to go move to our good word. Uh, and, and that word is called good word. Literally. Bitter, good diction meaning word. Good word. Benediction. Amen. We love you in the Lord. There's nothing you can do about that because truly God is love. We thank God for every one of our visitors today, members and friends here at First Mount Zion. Those online, thank you for worshiping with us on today. God's message to you. Let us look to be this mess. Father God, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for today. Thank you, Lord, for the connection of faith, that knowing and having the necessity of saying, I